Yeah, so I uh, got on the old blower and made a few calls and the guys over at Hastings Deering and, and Cat Rental have been able to provide me with an unbelievable fleet here. You know, I can't wait to, to jump in and uh, play with them all. So for the build, we've got uh, my 259D3 uh, skid steer. It's just something you kind of need to finish off most of the track. Lucky enough, we have one of them here on the farm. We've got the, uh, the D3. Super important to have here on the farm, but especially in the build, in terms of pushing up a lot of dirt and, and also polishing, to be honest. Here we've got uh, the new D6 dozer, and that's just what we need sort of for this job. Motocross track, generally a lot bigger jumps, a lot more dirt is involved, a lot bigger mounds. You know, you're pushing a lot more. So this is uh, another brand new machine, uh, the 972 wheel loader. I think it will be fantastic for shaping jumps, for putting the dirt where it needs to be and also helping out our friend next door. Now we got the 730 articulated dump truck. Loading this thing with the 972 makes things a lot easier so uh, it'll make the process a lot quicker. So then we've got the, the last but not least, the, uh, the 330 excavator. All that dirt's got to come from somewhere, so this big girl's pulling it out of the ground for us. It will have the most important job, let's say, of the whole build. In terms of the track, I mean, I've kind of thrown some ideas towards Josh. Josh does this for a living, so he's got more of an idea. I ride the bikes for a living, but uh, he he builds the tracks and sort of knows what'll go well together. So we've got, yeah, we've got this hip wall jump here, straight out of the turn. Yeah. There's two flowy doubles. Yeah. Then after that, we're just gonna have like chuck a left, sweep up and down, then we're gonna come back around this pile here now. Oh, you're gonna come back in here? Yeah, we're gonna sweep around here like a nice big sweeper. Yeah. And sort of head behind back towards the ramp of that big one over there, and then we'll come back around that, that tree there and just over the big one. It looks good when you're going around the trees and especially in all of these corners, help hold moisture in, That's keep right. a bit of shade. It's been good. He sort of come to us and said he wants the bigger ones on the outside here and then we can pretty much do whatever you want in here, just a little bit tighter on the infield. And um, yeah, just not make it nice, fun and, and forgiving, just real safe for him. I think the old boy had a different idea in mind. He was <laughs> yeah. kind of only using one of the years about this part of the paddock. We ended up pushing it a bit further. We left him in the hole over there and he didn't really yeah, see no until he was too far gone. <laughs> yeah. So Jack, you've, you've had a look at the uh, the auto tip-off feature. So I just want to show you the uh, the auto um, auto dig feature. And literally what that does is we can set the resistive effort based on the material. So one is like really light material. And then you can go one, two, three, four, five. Um, once you get to six, you can actually do a record mode as well. So let's play around with the numbers. I reckon sort of three for this kind of loose material will do the job. Um, once, you get, once you get in there, put it onto auto, leave it in tip off to pile mode, and then literally just drive the machine into the pile and then just let the machine load the bucket for you. Don't even touch the controls, just sit back, relax, have a cup of tea, just enjoy it. Sweet, mate. I like the sound of that. Cool. Cup of tea was probably a bit much. <laughs> I've been lucky enough to ride motocross in, in America and uh, places like that with some of the better motocross tracks in the world, a lot of big jumps and so on. And then, for example, in Europe as well, with more kind of narrow technical tracks, you know, having the space here, the idea was to try and build those big sort of showy American style jumps. So that's what we've kind of gone for. People will enjoy it because you get those big jumps, but they're still super safe. It doesn't matter really your skill level all that much because they're so forgiving. There's a lot of room for mistakes on the down ramps, especially whether if you get long or short. With motocross, you, it's a little bit more forgiving in some areas in terms of if you miss the line or so on, there's generally like three or four more there. Whereas with MotoGP, if we miss a line, you're in trouble. You know, you're either going off track or you're losing position straight away. So um, that's the tough thing. But then of course with motocross, you hit one bump wrong and it kicks the bike wrong, then you're losing a whole heap more. So there's uh, different variables in the two, but uh, I enjoy them both just as much. You know, I love the, the speed and uh, let's say the preciseness of MotoGP. But then also I enjoy the, the grassroots, I guess you could say, of motocross because we all sort of grew up doing it. We all um, 
started racing that way and you can still go back to the local club and enjoy yourself uh, quite easily. It doesn't matter the age. Jack mean driver. Everything. Yeah, everything. 15 minute intervals <laughs> before he gets bored and then picks something else. He's been pretty consistent in his water cart though. I'm waiting for him. That's why I keep looking around. I'm waiting for him to come by us and spray us. Yeah. He doesn't mind about he water. Bobby the Boucher, water he's the water boy. <laughs> find itself a little home here shortly. Oi, I was trying to hold it in there before, like facing that way, and this head give it gas, and I nearly went flying off the side of it, eh? <laughs> you can have the best track in the world if you can't get the water into it or get water to it. Yeah, nowhere. But the biggest thing is people are really scared of putting water in the track because of puddles. But if you go there and then you turn it over, say with discs or a power arrow or a rotary hoe, you get rid of the puddles and the stuff and the moisture goes to the bottom and it stays there for longer so you can ride the track more throughout the day. Yep, 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 yep. Quick. Oh. Lucky. Like it's love. Lucky. What are you doing, Big Nuts? Where are you going to water? Track or...? Uh, I'll go and do over it. Oh, you go and do over it and I'll do the track. Zach, how you going again? Good, mate. Well, what we got here, Jack, we got a next-gen D6 dozer, and it's got what we call a grade 3D system in it. So we've um, plotted the, the track here with the machine and built a model. It's come from the office, we put it in the dozer. So automatically, you can sort of have the auto button on the machine. The dozer's gonna follow this profile all the way around. So spreading that sand here, we can put it out in a nice 80 mil even layer that we wanna do. You can sort of sit in there, Perfect. one hand's off the controls, and Wait, away you go. I mean, like a professional. Correct. So it's kind of like the building block with our technology on the dozer. So like your little D3, it's got slope assist. This one's got it too. But um, yeah, the grade 3D system, when you get a model from the office, really makes it easy to sort of do these more complex jobs. Definitely, I'm excited to see it in action. Yeah, no, very good. Well, if you want to jump in. A bit of sand in a push. Yeah, a bit of sand to push, and away we go. So essentially, this is our 3D display. It's essentially like an Android tablet. Um, you can sort of customise the views to what you want to see. Um, this is this sort of nice profile that Josh has sort of done with his machine. We've sort of mapped that in the office. So when you hit the autos, it's going to sort of follow you around and we've set an 80 mil offset, so it's going to spread that material nice and even. Only button we really need to press, that's the automatic button there. When you're forward, out of park, um, our park brakes off. If you hit that and touch the blade down, start up a little bit above. That'll come into auto and away we go. Have fun. Yes, you can see there, sort of follow that profile around, automating the blade lift, blade load and the tilt. So nice and even layer of sand that Jack went around there, pushing that out. People can come back and cut that down another level and then sort of push that material a bit further. But good thing about the grade 3D system, even if you're an experienced operator, it's gonna make you a bit more productive. If you're a new beginner, Having a system like that really makes you um, get the job done quickly. Boys, how are we? Jack, how are you? Good to see you. Chris. Hey, Jack. Chris. How are you going? Steve, how are you? Hey, mate. Hi, Josh. <laughs> How's things, mate? Yeah, well. Well. Welcome to, to Gumlow. Thank you. Yeah. First time out here. Yeah. 
It's, it's, impressive. it's an impressive yeah. looking track so far. Yeah, not too bad, eh? Peter's been rather busy, Josh has been rather busy, I've been busy bludgeoning, so yeah. it's been good. Yeah. The boys started Monday, Monday a week ago, but we did Saturday and Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday with the machines. We got a bend in the creek there and every year it fills up with sand. Like that yeah. day's just been reclaiming it every year, just scraping out the creek and we stockpiled it. So. 40 arctic loads out of the creek there yeah. and um, yeah. but try and get some sand and mix it through as well just help hold the moisture especially when it gets to summertime yeah. 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 Just, yeah. just spray it on and evaporate straight away yeah. So yeah. they used the dozer and they sort of just screwed it around a bit and just sort of fluffed up yeah. anything that was sort of hard with on the, the ground with yeah, the tracks just use yeah. The browsers, yeah. and then push it back up with the skiddy and sort of make the berms all nice and everything like yeah. that again yeah. so that was i did that last time and cut well, my time down by yeah. half you know just, <laughs> Are you waving for the camera? He's waving a cam. Say hello. Hi. Well, he was like the yeah, so what he's done is he's raised the track up pretty much everywhere by about six inches. So you sort of use it to slow down, like you'll go high and stop and then turn basically. He's just sort of pushed up those jumps today and getting this sorted. He'll have it all pretty much bucked up tonight and then he'll skiddy it tomorrow, I think. That's it? That's That'll be pretty much it. Hey Jack, you know your shadow blading? Yeah, I could see that. You've actually got to put dirt in front of your blade. Easy with the snide comments. <laughs> Keep coming all the way through the corner, mate. You can just blow it all the way through. Are you trying to tilt the left hand side down just so you can get a bit of camber to it? That'd be cool what you've done there, like come out of that turn, like a little rise and then go into that right hander. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> sure you did. I think we've um, put something together pretty sweet and um, Jack seems pretty over the moon as well. And uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with it all. Yeah, I think size-wise, it, it's definitely up there. I think just the sheer like, volume of dirt we got to use and, and the equipment just made it a hell of a lot easier. So it's definitely been a fun project to be a part of. Yeah, the cat machinery is unreal from, from cat rental. Like we use it back home and, and um, I wouldn't use anything else just to get the job done. It's um, second to none. Always quality gear and, and just the comfort in the in the cabs of all each bit of uh, equipment is just um, unmatched. <laughs> Jack was just uh, driving whatever was available. He, um, he bounced around and loaded a few trucks and pushed a bit of dirt out and dug a little bit here and there. So he was uh, he was a good help.
fucking nah, it was sick. Unreal, unreal, better than I could have expected. That infield, dude, is so much fun. Yeah, the it looks like it flows. It flows so nice, so, so, so nice. Step up. Huh? Step up. Unreal, I was tossing it a couple of times. It. I need to use more of the down ramp. I'm landing on the inside, and then I'm like going square You're to the open. corner. I'm not opening it up. Yeah, open it up, land on that left, and chuck Bill, how was that? Yeah, look? that was good. Yeah, 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 Fun. It's that step up, you've nearly got to hit it from the outside. Like come round that come left, stick wide, top. jump to the left, and then go. I wasn't using enough of the we, left. We were just going straight in, then just yeah, turning big pockets. <laughs> oh, no, so good. That was pretty good, eh? Yeah, we're all good. Had a ball. Yeah. I think the uh, the boys are gonna like that. Yeah, I think so. A hey. bit of fun. The uh, no, the whole section, you know, the fast mm. down the outside, and then even like this little bit of a rhythm lane down here with the doubles is so sick. Yeah, you can just sort of, it's all about getting your timing right, and and then going into the sand, like all those sandy corners now. Just they were like real good sweepers around that band pile. It just flows nice. I'm definitely and glad we went that, and not the the tight boom. Yeah, definitely. Um, and even like here, just pop up in there, unload, get down into it, up and over. I was a bit skeptical on your step up, but I think that's probably, honestly, the most fun jump on yeah, the track. Yeah, favourite. Because you, can, you just go up, so you're sort of absorbing, you want to toss the bike a little bit just to sort of take away a little bit of your speed, and it's just so much fun. The warps around the corner, though. Yeah. That's technical. Yeah. Super technical, like... Right I'm going through there pretty good. He was he was struggling a little bit more mm -hmm. just to sort of trust the front in between there and the tabletop. Because yeah. sort of it's like hard pack and you're leaning quite a bit onto the face. A bit of lean angle in there. But it's it's the sand sort of blending through there. Like it's coming. It's stretching it's like stretching its way down. Yeah, it's like I blend through real um, nice. No, the whole that layout. I don't think we could have done it any better. No, and I mean, we were chasing our butt a little bit today. With filming and everything, and we were still able to keep moisture in it. And yeah, I think once you like, you got that blend real nice down, keep on that moisture, it'd be absolutely epic. That's the thing, ride. you just got to flood it, flood it at night, hit it with a hoe, yeah. and then well, get it ready to go. Keep your old boy busy, huh? That's it. <laughs>